today I will be playing with the Dior Ecrine Couture, which is this beautiful five pan eyeshadow palette as part of the Dior Atelier of Dreams, House of Dreams 2021 holiday collection. And so you can see that it's on my eyes. I'm using some Dior lipstick, Diorific from the collection for the holiday. So if you're interested in seeing how I did the look and review and how I did this look for this beautiful eyeshadow palette, then keep watching. Hi, beauty fam. So today we are going to open and try on and review the Dior Ecrin Couture. And this is the iconic eye makeup palette. And here's what it looks like. This is the packaging. It's beautiful. Definitely uh, luxury packaging with some embossing of the gold, raised gold. And it, it comes with this five pan palette and a leather like container. I don't think, I don't believe it's actually real leather, but it's leather-esque, but we'll open it today and then do some swatches and a try on. And here is what it looks like. It fits in the palm of my hand about um, the size of actually a cue card, a three by five cue card is what I want to say, and a six month shelf life. And that's pretty on par with Dior Quince. It's supposed to look like leather. I don't believe it's leather, but it, the embossing of this eyeshadow package is the facade of the building of which Dior, uh, the birthplace of Dior in Paris, France, and 30 Montaigne. Montaigne, I'm saying it wrong, but it's um, that's this is what the entire collection is based on. And it's really beautiful. It has this kind of gold metal Christian Dior and just really lovely embossing. And it comes with a mirror so you can do the makeup if you're on the go. Plastic sleeve and the brush. If you're in a pinch, you can use that. And then these five beautiful colors. Now the question I had is that if one one is done with these five eyeshadows, can we remove it and reuse the box? I am not sure. I'm afraid to take this out as I don't want to <laughs> destroy my package, but I can, I can imagine that you could try, but it might actually be glued in there is what I'm guessing. So even after the eyeshadows are well expired, I think one could keep this as a keepsake of luxury beauty and have it on your shelf. But if anyone knows, let me know. Um, it would be great to be able to reuse this as like a like a box, a little clutch on the way you know out and about town. I was going to not get this just because it's a little bit uh, more predictable colors, but I figured I really do love the Dior formula, and I'm always looking for neutral shades, but also with a beautiful pumpkin orange, which, which ends up really looking really nice on um, my warm skin tone. Uh, when I was first starting out with makeup back in high school, back in the day, um, does anyone remember the brand Prescriptives? Yes, so Prescriptives was supposed to be like a tailored company. I think it might've been owned by Clinique at that time. I'm not sure, but I Prescriptives and Clinique were my brands of choice and then I moved on to Mac. But Prescriptives basically kind of color matched you and your tone to the products that they sold. So, and they made these kind of like tailored quads or quints for eyeshadows. And for me, they started me out with something a very similar color story of oranges, browns, and a shimmer. And so that product, that company has since closed, but I have always found that oranges have looked really good on tan, warm complexion. So I was really excited to have this in a Dior formula. And so why don't we go ahead and swatch these? So I'm afraid to use, I don't want to get rid of the Dior embossing, but again, I use my products. Um, we'll start with the bottom. I'll swatch with the bottom because I don't want to mess that up as quick as just, And those are the swatches. Okay, and those are, those are the swatches. Okay, so 
right off the bat, I'm really telling that I can really loving these two colors. These are the shimmer satin shades, definitely a matte and then a glitter topper or um, it's a shimmer shade as the as the uh, evening glitter topper or to bling out your look. Um, a little bit reminds me of these two, reminds me of the Tom Ford formula. But this one, unfortunately, is pretty much exactly my skin tone, which is a little disappointing, but you know, we'll use it and see how that goes. Okay, so my face is already done. My my eyelids are primed and prepped already. Um, and I'll put in the description box all the products I'm using below. Um, I will note that I'm cheating on Dior a little bit. I am using and enjoying so far my Chanel Iridescent Illuminating Fluid in Or Ivoire. And it's just like the perfect um, cocktail. So today, I just want to highlight that what I used for my foundation today was a co cocktail of the Clay de Peau. Uh, radiant fluid foundation natural and then it's a little bit too deep for me because this is more my perfect summer shade and what I wanted to do was cocktail with with this illuminator from Chanel to just make it a little bit lighter and wearable for me and it actually ended up being a pretty good shade match and it also just illuminated my skin so I'm really happy um, and my skin just looks pretty natural but just like a little bit better and smoother so I'm just really enjoying this. Um, I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna test this illuminator with all my uh, foundations to see if I can really basically cocktail it <laughs> with all my foundations. So let's start with the look. What I do is start with the shade that was the lightest, which is pretty much like I, like the lightest uh, color here. It's uh, this one here that barely showed up. And what I want to do is kind of put it all over my eyelids and see what happens. Okay, and it just, you can, you know, this is the side without, which is matted down with powder, and then this is the shimmery side. I would say it's pretty much, mm, it just kind of recedes with my complexion. So it just lay down a little bit of a wash of color to even out. I use a Hakahoto J5522 just to um, spread that on, and it's a goat hair brush. Okay, and then going into this kind of shimmery beige color right here, and then I'm going to start building my crease. Okay, that was pretty easy. And then I took my, it was my rougher 50. And then I'm taking my rougher 01 brush and then I'm going into this orange shade here. And there's not much kickback. Beautiful, really easy and seamless. It's going by faster than I thought it would. And I think this is the beauty of uh, Peter Phillips, the global director for the Your Makeup, that he just really made and curated the colors to be just beautiful colors that anyone could use every day. But then you have the uh, option of amping it up for an evening look. I could see myself reaching for this um, on an everyday basis. Or if you're commuting into work, you could just grab this or traveling bringing this palette along. So I'm taking that deepest color here just to um, deepen up my outer V area. Again, taking my tried and true Sonia G mini booster. Okay, that's it. And then I'm going to probably, I want to see what this might look like. Mm, I'm wondering, let's play with this. I'm wondering if I want this sparkly shade as my inner corner highlight or to lay it on top of this. Let's see what that looks like. That'll look really pretty if I layer that on there. I think I'm gonna do that. 
Um, and I'm actually going to likely just take my finger. Let's do that. So just taking my finger into that um, shimmer shade. pretty just lightens up the look a little bit it's a little fancier and then I'm taking a rougher 03 brush and then going back into that same shimmer shade and then just using this brow bone and for my inner corner I'm taking my Lotus Series Sonia G Soft Definer. I love this brush just to, and it's clean, just to lay some color down here. I think I'm actually going into this beige color here on the tip, brushing off a little bit. And then going back into that shimmer shade and then kind of mixing it actually with this one. Tapping off just to lighten up the bottom a little bit. Very pretty. Okay, and what I always like to do is uh, blend it at the end. Taking my Wayne Goss 03 brush, making sure it's clean and just using it to buff out the edges. I'm gonna go back into this shade and just kind of add on a little bit more, make sure it doesn't get lost in there. Really pretty. And then I'm going to press some of that shimmer shade back on, just in the middle. And just right off the bat already, it's kind of in an orange kind of way, pumpkin orange. It's giving me a little bit of body heat vibes where the main shade is more of a um, burgundy mauve color, um, just like the smokiness and the sultriness and that it's really just really pretty. Reminds me of the Tom Ford body heat, but with a orange option. Great. So let me finish the other eye and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I finished with the eye look. I finished uh, the other eye used the Tom Ford eyeliner, used MAC Gigabyte mascara for my bottom lashes, and then finished the top of my lashes with the Chanel Volume de Chanel. And I have to say that at first I was a little nervous that, you know, it might be a little boring, but with the final eye look, it looks just elegant and simple, but beautiful. So let me get in closer so you can see. And, and what I lo really love about this shade here is that, and this is again with, the, I put the glitter topper on, that you could, with if you wanted more of a daytime work friendly um, look, you could just ignore the glitter and then use uh, these colors here, the first four. But if you are kind of like wanting to take this out with you on vacation or um, in your commute for work, you can easily go from a daytime to an evening look by just adding the glitter. So, um, you know, during the day, actually, if I'm gonna use this at work or um, a more conservative event, I might just use these three lightly, but then you can also then use this to deepen up and smoke out. So it's just really beautiful. And it definitely has the same Dior quality as the Quince, so I'm happy about that. So I think this is um, pretty, yes, it's a basic, uh, color story of uh, Quint 
you want. I guess it is it's five, right? So it's a pretty basic color story, but boy, you know, it's it's definitely the new reformulation of Dior, and uh, I'm really happy I picked this up. And it's it's reminding me a little bit of Tom Ford Body Heat. It's not definitely it's not the Tom Ford Wet and Dry formula, but the way this laid on, it just it reminds me of like a Tom Ford kind of color if that makes any sense really beautiful and i could see myself reaching for this palette just for this color for it to combine with other palettes as well just because i like it that much actually i'm wondering if anyone knows out there uh for dior i know they came out with the, the single eyeshadows so let me know if you know if they have a color that's similar to this as a single because i might be interested in just picking that up eventually Okay, so um, let me finish up with a lipstick. Four, two of the four lipsticks from the holiday collection that I thought might be really good to match. And then from there, I'll pick my blush color. I only have two Dior <laughs> blushes, so I don't have much to choose from. So I'm going to swatch that one. That's 076 Dior Rific Taupe Ispahan. And that swatched pretty deep, so it, it can be sheared out. There we go. So it's more of like a, there we go, like a reddish brown. And then we have Rouge Capuchin 075, which is the orange one. Really pretty. Great. Look how big that mirror is. I just love it. So I'm taking that mirror to apply my lipstick. And I'm doing the uh, Taupe Ispahan. And I do have some lip oil, but I just, I like to have it just so it's hydrated, just so you know, so I don't have any other lip color on. It's just um, lip oil to keep um, the lipstick going on nicely. And that's it. That's really beautiful. Taupe Ispahan. And if you can believe it, I have not put any uh, blush on yet. I just have bronzer, but um, this is what happens. Um, the, the good side of rosacea is that I get a natural flush. And so um, it just pulls my natural um, rosy red. It looks like I have blush on already. Um, not a terrible problem to have, but you know, it's one is uncomfortable. It's not cool. So I'm going to take this off and then we're going to try the Rouge Capuchin. Okay, going in, trying with the Rouge Capuchin. Rouge Capuchin. And definitely brings out more of the orange flesh I have on my cheeks. I think we're going to keep this one. I think it's beautiful because I think it's because it's starting to get dark. So I'm like, we're heading into evening. So let's leave that on. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a roundup of the entire collection and tell you my favorites of this collection. But this Dior, just all of it is just hands down. I think if you're interested in getting a holiday collection this year, Dior is the one to get. And you can't be, you won't be disappointed if you pick the one thing that speaks to you and buying it. Um, I have to say, I just, the, the lipsticks right off the bat are um, maybe my favorite thing out of this collection. We'll see. But that's really beautiful. It goes really nicely with the, the orange here. So let me finish up with, with a little blush. I actually only, I own two Dior blushes. Um, and... I'm fine with that unless there's other ones that you can suggest. But I own 459 Charnel. And then from the Birds of a Feather collection, the uh, 462. Uh, it doesn't have a color other than a number. So one's like super bright. And then this is more of a muted color. So let me swatch both of these for you. Okay, this is the Charnel. It's that one here. And it's quickly becoming my favorite out of the Dior, out of actually all of my blushes from the Birds of a Feather collection. It 
you know what? What am I going to do? We might just do a cocktail. Okay. I'm thinking taking the brightest blush here from the collection or from the Birds of a Feather collection, just taking that bright one and just putting it higher up here because it's so bright. There we go. Okay, that's that blush by itself. Birds of a Feather collection, really beautiful. 462. I mean, I would say for sure this if it's an evening look, but I'm just curious, I'm wiping off my brush, what Charnel might look like if I pop that towards the front. Yeah, that works too. I'm really, I really like mixing my blushes, as you know, um, and why not? Really beautiful. I'm excited with these. Okay, so let's move to my final thoughts on the eyeshadow palette Dior Ecrin Couture. And I think what it means is like a small eyeshadow or small box is what I looked up what this translates to in French. So I will say that, um, you know, it's not the most exciting color story, but I, if you um, new to my channel, um, I am a neutral lover gal. The, you know, the most um, bright colors that I get are usually in Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona. I don't have too many indie brands. I'm starting to get into that, but um, you know, if we're talking about the daily, about what I prefer, my style is definitely more understated neutral colors. Uh, what I do like about it is that yes, these I think these colors can work for this color story can work for a lot of people. And then you know if you kind of just cover that up, this is a pretty easy daytime look. You can even use this as an eyeliner. You'd, uh, you don't have to do the black like I did, but I definitely put a uh, liquid eyeliner because I just wanted more of an evening look as it's getting darker here. Uh, but as you know, as we get into evening, this can easily transition to an an evening look um, with that topper shade here. I'm just gonna add a little bit more here to just amp up the look. And that's an easy trick. And then if you wanna smoke it out more, you just add a little bit more. Just add a little bit more of the deeper shade to the outer corner to smoke it out a little bit. And done. See, so and then you could just drag whatever remaining product you have, drag it under the lash line to smoke out the look more. So you can see how that definitely amped up the look to be more smoky. So I'm really happy with this palette. Um, I have to say that I actually like this better than one of the quints. So. You know, which one do I like the best out of all the quints, all, all the eyeshadows that were offerings from Dior to say that I will probably use this the most, but I enjoy House of Dreams the best because of that silver shade with the mauve purpley tones um, that complement. The silver are just so beautiful and that silver shade just pops. That's my favorite. But in terms of which one, which palette am I going to pull from every day? It's likely going to be this just because it's it's an easy, you know, everyday kind of quad. I don't have to think too much. It took like less than 10 minutes to do, which ease of use is great. Okay, so, you know, it's completely dark outside. So um, this is why we're gonna have studio lighting. So just so you know, this is what it's gonna look like with studio lighting. Um, what I don't like about studio lighting is I think it kind of blows out some of the color. Let's go to that. Too contrasty. Okay, so we're going with what we have. So this is uh, the final look with the studio lighting. 
House of Dreams is probably my favorite out of this entire collection, just because this silver pops and then all these colors complement each other. And so this is probably my favorite. Um, my least favorite is probably the Atelier Doré, just because I think the gold just didn't, you know, a lot of golds can be a little bit fussy on me. Alone it looks great, but when, when paired with the other, other colors, it tended to, can you see that? It just, it tended to really just kind of mute and bring down the, the gold a bit. And I was not a fan of this color here um, and it just sometimes the look ended up being a little bit muddy for me in terms of I probably would say this is my second favorite one but I would probably end up using this the most and reach, reaching for this quad and this eyeshadow palette the most but we'll see time will tell um, and as you saw both lipsticks I tried on look really wonderful with this look let me take my hair clips up because I pull my hair back when I'm doing my makeup. So this is the final look. Tell me what you think. Okay, so that's it for my review. I have one more unboxing, um, but I'll film it, film it on another day. Thank you for watching the video. If you're interested in joining the Naked Car Beauty Fam, I would so appreciate it and have, love to have you as part of this community that we're building. Um, please consider commenting below, subscribing, and clicking the bell for notifications and thumbs up. And I try to upload to YouTube at least two, sometimes three times a week. And make sure to follow me on Instagram where I'm pretty active and try to post content um, every day or every other day. But sometimes I do looks and reels that I do TV that are not posted on YouTube. So as always, please take good care of yourself and others and it's just be you. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.